The Antigua State College presents this how-to video as a guide to applicants. It will demonstrate how to fill out our online application form. The link to the form will be accessible from our website seen here. Let us begin. Once you click the link, it will take you to this page. This is the online application page. At the top of the page, you note that there are two buttons, one to create a new application, the other to continue an application in progress. This means that you do not have to complete the form in one sitting. Before you select any of the buttons, we encourage you to please read the guide for applicants below as seen here. We have documented some requirements with which you should be familiar prior to starting the form. Let us now create a new application. Once we click that button, we, on this screen you are asked for security purposes to enter the characters seen in the image here. You'll enter the characters in this text box, entering the characters as they appear from left to right. If you do not get it correct the first time, it will generate another. Once you would have correctly entered the security letters, you are now at the Create Online Application Form page. Please, at any page that you go to, read any text that appears at, on the page as explanatory text. We actually have two forms on this page, and I will explain. It says here to complete this form to create an online application. All fields are required. If you have ever been issued an ID or PIN from the Antigua State College, you may use that to create a new application by using the form below. And the form below refers actually to this second form, okay, which appears below the other. This is an instance where you may have applied prior and we would have received your ID and PIN, uh, your ID in, a let, in the letter responding to your application at that time, or you may be a current student uh, applying to another program. In those instances, you would have your ID. If you know that you are such a person, but you do not remember what your ID is, please send an email to admissions at asc.edu.ag. We will now continue for a person who would have never applied to the Antigua State College before. The first thing you have to do on the form is to select the department application. Note that they're all listed here. And if you are applying to more than one department, then you will use this form, the multiple department form. For the purposes of this demonstration, I will be selecting the Department of Business application. Fill out the form as further required. First means your first name, your middle initial or name, last name, or title, surname, your phone number, and birth date in this format. First the month, then the day, 
than the year. Make it a different day. Then your email address. At Gmail or Hotmail, whoever your email provider is. You key it in again to confirm the email. Here on the PIN, the personal identifi identification number, you enter a minimum of three, maximum of six characters, which you will use as part of your login credentials. Type it again to confirm. And then click the Submit button. You are now getting a message from the system to indicate that you have successfully created an online application and that you are to expect an email which will contain your application ID and it has been sent to the, that email address that you would have entered in the form just prior. Note that there is the word here is an active link which will take you then to the screen where you will have to put in those credentials that you receive from your email. I will go now to the email. The email is in my inbox. However, if it does not show in your inbox, please check your junk email. So I have the email. You'll read the contents and then you can copy either from the email the ID. You would have created the PIN, so you should have that in your brain to enter it. You will go back and click here, so this link, enter your ID from the email address and the PIN that you would have created. Click the login button so that we can get to the form. We are at the first page of the form. Note that along the left-hand side of the, the screen, these are the pages which we'll have to complete. All of them do not apply to all applicants. It's depending on which department you are applying, to which department you are applying. So we will begin by filling in the information on, that is necessary on the personal information. Some of it would have been captured from the first form that you filled out, your first name, your middle initial, your last name as seen here. Select your gender from the pick list of email. Your birth date is already in. The prefix, miss, mister, etc. Suffix would not be relevant since I've chosen to be a female. Um, normally, the males are the one who are junior or the second or the third. So you will select that if that is applicable. Indicate whether you are a citizen of Antigua and Barbuda by selecting from the two options, yes or no. Enter your address. Select your parish and the country. There is a note at the bottom of the page and there is also here from the where you your name would appear the help option which will have some notes to guide you as well with the page we've tried to put most of it on the page itself but you can always check to see what is here in terms of any guidance so here on the help here at the top of the page with the page notes and there's also notes at the bottom of the page all in an effort to give you as much information to help you complete the form. You don't need to put in a zip code, that's not relevant. If you have a work phone, you can put it here or an alternative number. Your email address is already in and captured. And if there is an alternative cell phone, you, you can put that here. Save and continue 
this button will take us, once we click it, to the next page automatically. However, this is the only instance in the process where this will happen. On the academic program, this is now where you will select based on the department program options, associate degree options. So we are in the Department of Business application, and so there are five options from which to select. Please note, you may be asked to be considered for a maximum of two degrees. So the first one that you select is going to be considered your preferred program or your first choice. The second one will be your alternate. So I'm interested in marketing. The test student is in marketing as a first choice. That's what I really want to do. So I select marketing. The application term is already selected by default. So you're coming in for the August 2021 um, uh, semester. And the campus is Golden Grove. Please select Golden Grove for the campus, regardless of which department you are applying to. You click Save. And that program is reflected at the bottom of the page. You can remove it if you change your mind. We go and select our second option. For me, that's Human Resource Management. And again, we have to select the campus. We save that. Okay. Note that once you would have selected two, there is a message saying that you have already selected the maximum number. So you can't go and select another one unless you remove one of these that you would have selected already. Now we need to go to the next page. So following consecutively, we will now go to the education background because there's no automatic moving to this page without us clicking on it. In the educational background, you are asked to search your institution by clicking on the search by institution link to find your school. Choose an institute from the list or leave the list blank and give the name and address of your institute directly in the text box referring here, labeled institution below. If you have a GED or high school diploma, you just have to declare it in the program and not fill out the degree here. So that would be the case for most of you. We're first going to start by getting the institution. If we use the search option, you will type part of your institution name or you could type it in full. Um, you do not necessarily have to fill in all of these text boxes, the type of city, etc. You can search just by submitting a partial on the name. And in this case, Antigua Girls High School link comes up. I click on that. And this now selected. Now it asks me about the degree, but because this is a high school, we don't put in the degree. And we just say here, high school diploma. You can type that in. Your entry date would be the date that you started in first form. If you don't remember specifically, you can always use September 1st of the year that you would have started as the date. Your leaving date, you can leave it blank because so if you're still in school, but for those of you who would have left school a while, you will put the date there. If you Again, if you do not remember specifically, um, most of the times you can use June 30th as the date for the leaving date. The important thing here is to capture the correct year. If you would have graduated, then you can enter your graduation month and graduation year here. If you're putting a single digit, proceed it with a zero, and then the full year. If you did graduate, then you would select that. If not, you leave it blank. These can be left blank if you did not graduate. So we're going to leave that like this and click Save. So that first institution is here. If you are someone who would have attended multiple institutions, then you will go back and repeat the process for your second institution. 
I will use this time to demonstrate if you are in, you've entered an institution, you're searching by searching, but it does not come up in the list. So I'm going to put here Abbott. And I get a message saying no institutions match the criteria. So you would return. We do have Abbott in the list, but it's listed as Antigua and Barbuda International Institute of Technology. So to the extent that you did not write it like that or any of those words within the name, it will not come up. If however you, so if in the instance where you would have done that and the institution does not come up, there are two options you can the one I suggest is just to type it here in the institution box. And then fill in the option for degree if you would have completed a degree there. I'm just going to select diploma and for example. This is just to give you an idea. Again, fill in the date, the entry and leaving date as applicable, whether you graduate or not. If you don't have that information, you have to go search for it and come back. You can still go ahead and save this and go back and edit it. Notice that there's an edit option. So as you are doing it and you don't have the information, you can always go back and edit. Okay, we'll move on. This next page is in relation to references. This, of course, is only applicable to those students applying to the Department of Business, Department of Teacher Education, or the School of Pharmacy, and liberal arts if you are a mature student applying to liberal arts. You, here, you are to capture the information of the persons who are going to be your reference references. So, you put in on the name, you put both the first and last name, full name of the person. You capture their job title here and put in reference type. Most of you, that can remain as academic, which is the default. There's employment and personal as the other options. You can fill in this, this information, but the most important thing in terms of address, but the most important thing is to have a phone number and an email address. Save that and then repeat for your second so once you would have filled in you have your two references so you must have at least two please list at least two you must enter current phone and email address with for these persons and so that was the notes on this page go to the help please list at least two references okay moving along employment employment history needs to be captured for those applicants who are applying to the evening program so it is required for those persons applying to the department of business for the evening program Note here, the notes of the page says list at least three companies for which you have worked. Optional, this is optional for applicants except those persons applying to the evening program, Department of Business. To the Department of Teacher Education, you those persons applying to the Department to the Teacher Education, you will document your teaching history in a different space on the PI and attachments page under additional questions. So that is here. So if you're a teacher education person, uh, applicant, then you will wait until you reach to this page to put your teaching history. So you'll fill out the name of the company or employer. I'm just going to use a generic company name, whatever it is. So it could be Frank B. Armstrong, Royal Bank of Canada, okay, your immediate supervisor's name, okay, the last time you worked, address, etc. filled out. St. John's, select the country, 
So I guess you can, you know, the last position that you held. So it was teller or salesperson or secretary or accounting clerk. You put that here, whatever that position was. Your employment, if you were a full-time employee, you are a part-time employee or you want an internship, you can specify that here. Uh, the weekly hours, you can ignore that, but normally it's 40. And then you can indicate when you would have started working uh, with the company and an end date, a stop date, if that is applicable. Okay. Click that information, save that, and that first one. Then you repeat the process for the other two, because you're asked to give at least three, if, if that many, if it's applicable to you may just be one, it may be only two, that's okay. Next is emergency contacts, and all applicants are asked to fill in uh, this information. You put the name, full name of the person on your name and give a primary number, which is normally a cell number, so that you can this is, reach the person quickly. And an alternative number, normally, yes, you should, that should be a, a work phone if the person is employed. Uh, because if there is an emergency when we have to contact them, these are the two primary numbers, unless the person, you know, is not employed and therefore a home number. The relationship of the person, normally it's a parent, you could put mother, father, parent, next of kin, husband, accordingly. Okay. If there's any explanatory notes you feel necessary with regard to reaching this person, you can always put that in the memo here. Click save on that, and just like on the other pages, the information goes to the bottom of the page. You can edit, remove it, and you can add an additional person. Our next page is the personal information and attachments page. And note here that all questions that are required must be answered before you can submit your applications. The questions that have an asterisk, like this one, number two, are the ones that are optional. If it does not have a, an asterisk, then you must answer it. You must provide an answer. Okay? Here, we are recommending that you print out the questions by clicking this button, PDF version of additional questions, prior to answering the questions. You can do that uh, so that you can get a sense of what is necessary or just go through it here but you certainly are encouraged to do it after, and you will actually get another prompt to print the PDF version. Okay. So have you ever applied to the college before? In this case, it's a no. And since I have not applied, number two does not apply, require an answer from me. It's optional anyway. Then there are some additional questions. Are you applying to the Department of Business Evening Program? And in this case, I'm going to say no. But if you were, you would select yes, of course. The country of birth, this is again just general. You would put, fill in your country of birth and your country of citizenship. Then we go down to the section requiring the attachments. So if you would have read the guide for applicants, you would know that this is coming up and you would need to prepare your documents for upload. So you need to get your photo, your passport photo. Must file the photo must follow the guidelines of a passport, or just as if you were going to get your official passport. Okay, we have written here no offensive words on clothing. Uh, use a plain white background. These are some no, no, you're not using any filters normally used on social media, and very important that the file size should be a hundred kilobytes or less. So you can just save it in a format for a web to put up, send in an email or to put up on a website. You will click the add attachment link, click the choose file and search on your PC or device for the location of the picture that you're going to upload. I'm just gonna choose a random photo. And once you select the photo, you choose the file and select it, then you have to click attach file in order for it to upload. 
and there will be a message here indicating whether that was successful. You click Submit, and then you close the window. And we will repeat this process for all these links that are here include add attachment. So we add an attachment now for our birth certificate. And again, I'm just going to choose a random file. Click attach. Note the num note the message. It's been successful. I click submit and I close the window. And note you put a single file for each one. So that would have been I've done my photo, I've done my what would represent my birth certificate. And if I have my passport, I can do it at this one where it says additional. Again, just repeat the process. Attach file, submit, close the window. And then there are other documents. And here, we'll, these are things like your CSEC. If you would have done CSEC exams and you have past slips or you have your certificate, any other documents in that type, you add here and add each one. You have three att add attachment links. So on each one, you can add. If you have multiple pages in the document, then you want to make sure that is a single document for you to upload. But if it's a different document, you want to put them separately. So again, just repeat the same process. Click the attach, look for your file, attach it, submit, and close the window. Okay, don't forget to click your set. These numbers have an asterisk, so that means they're optional, so I'm not going to add any more. I've repeated the process, so you should get the idea from that. The next thing you have to do is to indicate that you would have paid the application fee. So you put in the amount, and then you give us the date that was on the bank stamp, when date when you may paid that fee, and you put it in the format here. So I'll put 5th of August 2021 as the date that would have been on the bank slip. Note here that you will enter the payment amount in the bank stamp date from your payment slip and you will scan your payment slip and email it to this email address bursar at asc.edu.ag okay. and your application will not be processed without proof of payment. So you need to ensure that you send in that scanned copy. You will, of course, be required to submit the physical slip for our auditing purposes. So you can choose to bring that into the campus as well. The next section is financial resources. Identify your expected source of funding. So you have options for scholarship, loan, if you yourself are going to pay, your guardian or your parents. For most of you, it will be parents. And then optional, if you know for sure that, okay, your parents will probably take care of the first year, but um, you're going to need assistance. So you may have a second option where you're gonna take a loan. So you will indicate that there. But again, this number two is optional, so not necessary for filling out. So this will conclude this page. We save the information. Oh, we must answer. I we must answer whether or not we are applying to the. Okay, so I didn't select an answer. It was a required question, so I have to say no. And saves. However, if you do forget something like just happened, you will be prompted. 
Okay, so that takes us right down to the end. So click Submit Application. And here, as I alluded to earlier, you can print a PDF version of your application. And I'm going to click the button so that you can see what that looks like, as well as the PDF version of the additional questions, which, we, which is here, the PI and attachments, which we looked at. So if you click this button, I'm going to expand the window and increase the zoom so that you can see, we can zoom in. And so all the information that you would have keyed in prior is captured here. You can download it to your device and save it, or you can send it to a printer and have that for your reference at a later time. can close that window and then the other button similarly this now shows us the information captured on the page which we most recently completed and again you can download that or send it directly to a printer save it to your device okay once that is done, then we click Submit Application. You are prompted, are you sure? Are you sure that you would have captured everything that you needed to capture? We say OK. And that completes the process. You are back here where you started at the Login Create New Application page. If you had not submitted your application, you could return to continue an application in progress if you can complete any part of the application that you would not have completed at the first go. Note that I got an indication that I have an email. So you will get an email once you submit your application. You will get an email confirming that we have basically received it. Thank you for taking time to apply. Your application is now in the queue for processing. Please continue to monitor your contact email address that you submitted with your form for further communication from us. Okay, And it gives you again, you should receive a further communication from us within 48 hours of us of you submitting your application. So notice here, however, key in this e email is that you have a repeat of your ID and your PIN so that you can use this to monitor your application after process the initial processing has taken place. And that will be done here with to, from the applicant portal. So you would have started here in the online application, but when we respond to you, we'll be directing you here to the applicant portal. So thank you for listening, and I hope this is a great help to you as you go through and do your application for this upcoming year.